Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I've got... Ah, I had to go take care of my child. So, on one of my screens, I have floating petals because I'm ready for spring. That was all the winter that I wanted. That was plenty. Ready for spring. Ready to move on. Don't want no more snow. Don't want no more none of that. But you know what? I'm not in charge. So I guess if God wants it to snow, it will. But tonight I want to talk to you about uh, the power of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in His name. So that's a song that I shared today. Um, and I want to read you that sharing also, if I can. I'm not sure whether it's really hard to do a lot of these things at the same time. Uh, may not be able to without moving my camera. I don't know why I can't get my camera in front of this. I can, but I think when I click on this, it is going to go away. Yeah, it did. Okay, well, maybe I can get it back. Anyway, I want to start with prayer also, but I wanted to do this too. I wanted to read what I wrote this morning about this song, There is Power in the Name of Jesus. Jesus' name is all-powerful. So that's what I wanted to title this. Let me see if I can get this camera back. I am not real good at this. I don't know whether it loses. Um, I don't know. We'll find out later. I'll watch it later and see if it does. Um, I'm going to leave it right there for a little while. Then I'm going to move it back over here underneath my other camera because it just works better. So let's uh, be thinking about the power of Jesus. Be thinking about some of the verses that remind you of the power of Jesus. And uh, we will research them together. Uh, it's really weird having two cameras in because I keep looking back and forth. I got. I have to pick one. I have to pick one and stick with it. Okay. Alright, well let's pray first. Let's pray. I have my For King and Country t-shirt on today. Yay, For King and Country. They're one of my favorite Christian bands. Okay. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God, for all that you are and for all that you do. God, for all the power, all the power that, uh, your power that we see every day, God. You are so powerful and mighty and magnificent. You are the great I am. You are the great Jehovah. You are our everlasting Father. You, God, reign over everything. You are on your throne and you are in control, God. And we just thank you. We give you all of our glory, honor, and praise. And God, we just want to thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our healer, our shelter in the storm, God, and so much more. So much more. That's just five things. You do so much more, God. And God, we just thank you because you are the righteous judge. You are going to come and you are going to judge the unrighteous. But until, until that day, God, you will, you will be offering forgiveness freely. And God, we just, we praise you because you are loving and kind and compassionate and forgive, for forgiving and faithful. And God, you keep every promise that you've ever made. And we just thank you for that. God, we just um, we just pray, God. 
We pray for many that are sick, God. We just pray. We just lift them up to you. I found out something today, God, and you know what is on my heart and what's on my mind, and I just lift this family up to you, God. And I know that you will attend to it according to your will and your way, God. I just pray that these will trust your process of healing, God, and that that you would just give them strength. And God, I pray for um, I pray for the lost. We just pray for the lost. We just lift them up to you, God. We just pray for you to open their eyes and ears to the truth, God. That you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus, so they could be saved. God, we just pray for um, we pray for the prodigals to come home. We just pray for them, God, to see where they are, to remember where they used to be, to repent of their sins, and to return to you, God. We just pray for that, and we pray, God, for peace and unity in our country, God. But we know, God, that that only comes through Jesus. We pray for love and compassion. We did see the love and compassion in Texas, and we saw the hands and feet of Jesus in Texas, and probably in other states too. God, we thank you for that. We thank you that we can come together and we can serve others, and that there's a blessing in that, God, and we just, we thank you for that. God, we just pray, and we pray for We pray for all these disasters, God. Three three volcano eruptions in Guatemala, another one in Italy, God. We just pray for safety for these people. We also thank you that the airplane that lost part of its engine in someone's front yard in Colorado, God, that it didn't hit their house. It did hit their pickup and but it didn't hit their house, God, and it was so close. So we thank you for protecting them. God, we just, uh, so many things are happening, and we know, God, that they are birth pangs. That's what Jesus says, that they will come more and more frequent and more and more intense, just like birth pangs. And then, God, you will send our deliverer. You will send Jesus to get us. So God, until then, though, just give us boldness that we can share your truth with others and that we can share the gospel of Jesus with the lost. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Ow. Sorry. So I am... I wanted to share this on Facebook this morning, and so I'm going to read it to you right now about there's power in the name of Jesus. I lost my camera again. Okay, I got it back. Okay, every time I touch this over here, I lose my camera. Okay, so I was thinking about the power of Jesus this morning, and, um, this song and message by Lincoln Brewster popped into my head. There is power in the name of Jesus. And I really love the music, the lyrics, and this Brother Earl that did this, um, Brother Earl 1944. I like his videos. I use them a lot with youth because they're just simple. They're simple and you can read them. But I love all the pictures, the military pictures that he chose for this video of our military praying. You know, I feel like Jesus is going to show up in a mighty way and show the whole world his power. I think he did last week in Texas. People were his hands and feet. His love and compassion was on display. Hotels opened their doors for free. Neighbor helped neighbor. The mercy was on display. And it was. Um... I heard last night that much water was shipped into Texas. I'm not sure where it came from, but it was. i got to get my camera again. Okay, sometimes it takes tragedy for us to see what is important to us. 
So my scripture verse today on U version was 43, 18 through 19. Well, this is the scripture that I have chosen for this year to be my focal verse because I kept seeing it a lot last year and it's still popping up this year. And so I'm going to read it. I forgot to read it before I did my prayer. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. And so we are not to remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I mean, like, the Old Testament is great, the New Testament is great, so powerful. And it's history. It's history. We've got to focus on now. We have to focus on now. And so God says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. So now it is coming. He is going to show us something new. I don't know. A lot of people say it is revival. That we are going to have the most wonderful revival that we have ever had. And it may be. I think he's going to send Jesus. I think that's going to be the new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? Will we not know it when he does a new thing? Yeah, I think we will. I think we do know that he is doing something new. I think we know that. Um, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And you know what? There are floods going on in the desert. And it snowed in Israel the other day. When we got all of our snow, Israel got snow too. I don't know what day, but anyway. So God is doing some new things. And God, through his mighty power, is doing a new thing. As I listen to the lyrics of this song, I believe God wants to do a new thing in the hearts of all that He has created. He wants none to perish, but to come to Jesus for salvation now. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. I want to read it. Because I've, I've, I was really liking John 3, 16 through 17 last year. But then I got to looking at through 21. And it talks about where we are right now, too. Where a lot of people are right now. But there is still time. There is still time. To get saved. So even even verse 15. I'm going to start at verse 15. John 3, 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have ev eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Not R O T, but W R O G H T. That we are in God. We're in God if we do the truth. 
we cometh to the light. You know, this is, this, God's word is truth. It is truth. Okay. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. And so, I've changed up my thing, my share thing that I do. And I put the ABCs of salvation in there. I've been wanting to do that for a long time, and I finally got around to doing it. Admit that you are a sinner. Ask for forgiveness. Believe that Jesus is God's one and only Son that came to save the world through His death, burial, and resurrection. Confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord of your life. Invite Him into your heart. Leave the old. Receive the new. And uh, I'm just going to... I have a bunch of hashtags for 2021 because I like to do I like to do the year hashtags and then I try to focus on them all year long. Okay, hashtag 2021. God is in control forever. Hashtag 2021. Jesus is the good news for all. Hashtag 2021. These are my focal words. Presence, testify, encourage. Hashtag 2021, shine the light of Jesus. So if we're in the truth, we're going to have the light of Jesus. And we're going to be able to shine the light of Jesus also. Okay. Well, I'm going to move this other camera over here. So I'm not having to look back and forth. Uh, because I kind of like them underneath each other. It just kind of helps me not have to be looking in two places. Okay, so let's talk about the power of Jesus. We talked about the power of God. I hear a siren. I hear a siren and I hear a helicopter. I mean, we probably had a wreck here in Glen Rose. This town is the most siren town for a not huge town like Dallas and Fort Worth. We have a lot of uh, a lot of accidents here. So I'm just gonna pray real quick. God, I just pray for whoever siren effects. God, I just pray for them and their family. God, I just pray for protection. I pray for. Uh, the first responders, I just pray that you would be with these people and their family. I do not know them, God, but you do. You know them wholly. You know their heart. You know their mind, God. So just pray that you would be with them and give them courage, whatever they're going through. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so um, let's talk about the power of Jesus. What is the most powerful thing that Jesus did. Well, we know the first miracle that Jesus performed was um, at the wedding at Cana, where he turned the water into wine. But let's see what else he did. Something else that keeps um, surfacing a lot in my quiet time and in my verses is the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. have them on my desk, the Beatitudes, where he was uh, preaching on the mount. The Beatitudes keep cropping up too. So let's see, what was, uh, I mean, Jesus did so much that showed his power. Um, But Jesus didn't even have a place to lay his head down. Because in uh, Matthew 8, it says, And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. So Jesus was, um, Jesus didn't have a home. You know, he stayed with a lot of people. But he really didn't have his own home. But he performed very many miracles. And he showed his power. 
so many different times. He healed people physically. He healed them emotionally. Um, he told stories, you know, about about God and God's power. I'm trying to think of just a, a particular story because there's so many, so it, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard for, um, let's read about, um, not even sure where it is. Let's read about when he walked on water. Well, maybe, since I know where it is, because I ran across it, maybe we'll read about the, the many that he fed. Because I can't find. Because telling a story wasn't my plan. Doing these scriptures was my plan. But now that, now that I'm in the midst of this, I'm thinking one of these stories would be really good. Okay, well let's read the story about Jesus feeding the 5,000. Because that was very miraculous. Oh, this is also runs into the story about Peter. So let's just, let's do uh, Matthew 14. Feeding the 5,000. And we'll just read all that story. We'll just read all of Matthew uh, 14. Because it runs into the story about uh, Peter. And Jesus walking on the sea. Okay. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. So Herod thought he was John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. So Herod thought that John the Baptist, that he had cut off his head, um, had raised from the dead. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. Wait a minute. Hang on a second. I'm going to make sure I'm reading the right story. Because my Bible is kind of tricky. Sometimes it puts the towel underneath, but no. Okay. Uh, for Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's first day was kept. The daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and men which sat with him at meat, he commanded it be given her. And he was sent and beheaded John in prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And the disciples came and took up the body and buried it, and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the city. Jesus was very popular. He was very popular. 
And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. So he used his power to heal their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, and give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, beside women and children. So there were actually more. There were more that ate. There were five thousand men plus their wives and their children. So. He's a lot of people. He fed a lot of people with five loaves and two fishes. So that is the power of Jesus. That is his miraculous power. And um, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. So Jesus went off a lot of times to pray, to have that quiet time with God. Um, I think we should also do that. We should have that time with God. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch, Of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. So again, this this is more people, more people, and all they did was touch his garment, and they were made whole. So that is how powerful Jesus is. You know, the name of Jesus is the most powerful name. Okay, so I think that is, let me see if there's anything over here in scripture that I might want to read also, because I'm just not sure. Matthew 28, 18 is good. I want to read that. So I may want to end with that. That's the Great Commission. Okay, I'm sorry. 
Okay, that's several right there that we can read. Okay, so let's start with Matthew um, 28, 18. Hey, my friend Josie, how are you? The 28.18 in Matthew says, and this is the Great Commission, so I'm just going to read all of it. When Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So Jesus, even as he left, he wanted his apostles to know his power. And he also gave them power. He gave them the power through the Holy Spirit to go and share with others. We have that same power, too. We have the power through the Holy Spirit. And tomorrow night, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Luke 4.14 4, says, not too far, says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the regions round about, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because... He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down in the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth and they said is not this Joseph's son and he said unto them you will surely say unto me this proverb Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you this, I tell of you a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. So God gave Jesus all this power this power to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to recover the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. He gave him all the power. He also gave him power to show the humility and show the love and compassion that God has. That Jesus was able to show this in the flesh. And so, Jesus
Jesus was, he was that humble, loving, caring God in the flesh with unlimited power. You know, Jesus has unlimited power. Just like we just read, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. He has all the power. So the name of Jesus is the most powerful name. Alright, let's read 1 Corinthians 5, 4. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such as one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So, that is Paul writing to the Corinthians. Really, the leaven is like sin. It's a little bit of sin, you know, in, in a church or in, in a group. Brings sin upon the whole group. Is I believe what he's saying. Your glorying is not good. So they were, they were going after things of the flesh. Yeah, he was calling them out. He was calling them out for sin. But up here where we started reading, in the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, when we are gathered together in the spirit, we have the power of Jesus. We have that power in us. We have that spirit in us. If Jesus is our Savior, we have the Holy Spirit. Okay, so let's read Second Peter one sixteen. Second Peter one sixteen says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him on the in the holy mount. Um, so that was when uh, Moses and Elijah met with Jesus on the mountain and Peter was there I can't remember who else was there maybe John anyway that is what he's talking about they were with him on the holy mount so Jesus is not I mean Jesus is on the right hand side of God right now Jesus is where when God sent him to earth to be God in the flesh then after he died after he was raised like hundreds of people saw Jesus after he was raised and then like we read the, the uh, Great Commission 
Then Jesus ascended to heaven um, on the right hand side of God. But he is still powerful and he is still doing things and he is still saving souls. And he is still performing miracles. He is still doing awesome things. I don't know whether I have music going or not. I'm going to lose my other camera. There we go. I wanted to hear that song. Oh, turning it up instead of turning it down. My day was okay, Josia. Stayed home and did stuff around the house. I got to venture out tomorrow. Okay, so if you have any scriptures that remind you of the power of Jesus, then please add them in the comments. Okay, I'm going to move on and talk about what God and I talked about today. We talked about him being the righteous judge. Oh. Okay. I just got some. Uh, I'll read that later. Okay. So this is what God and I talked about today. And, uh, So I said, good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, child. A new day to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. New opportunities, child, to get things done in your house and teach your son also. And that's basically what I did. Um... So thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus, new opportunities to get things done in my house and teach my son also. Thank you for the rest last night, God, in that my hip does not hurt as bad this morning. And he said, child, many things will take place this week, good and bad. Love and compassion of Jesus was revealed last week in your state and will continue to be seen. Planned or not planned, I only know it was catastrophic for so many. Continue to pray for them. And yes, your enemies also, as my word says. Only I know when a soul cannot be redeemed look in the Bible and see to see how many times Israel was redeemed the modern Christian of today wants to be judged wants to judge hearts and minds but this is my job I will be the ultimate righteous judge of evil some may return and some may not but in my eyes in the eyes of Jesus the love, forgiveness, and chance for redemption is available. Remember this is to be equipped with scripture next time. Remember this and be equipped with scripture next time. I was like, I was on this chat and I had put a comment and somebody said something derogatory to my comment, but... I, didn't, I don't argue with people. But what he is telling me is to put a scripture in there next time. Because there is scripture that says that God is the righteous judge. And we are not to judge people. We don't know people's hearts and minds. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know who God's children are and who God's children are not. We don't know. You know, we like to inspect fruit. But God looks at the heart. And God looks at the mind. And he's the one that knows all of his children. The ones that um, have accepted Jesus. He probably knows us best. Because we 
we make an effort to have a relationship with him but other people that have not accepted Jesus or some that have accepted Jesus and have decided to go a different way repentance is available for them and only he is the one that decides when it is and when it is not available for them that is not our job so um, that's what we were talking about about redemption you know um, only he knows and um, he said many will be surprised who has been chosen to be my children and many that they think are but have not I showed you this also I showed you this and also my righteous anger during the tribulation child in your dream and I had a dream two or three years ago and he did he showed me that I, I saw his righteous anger but I wasn't afraid because it wasn't towards us it was towards the earth and that's why I knew it was the tribulation um, I said I remember my dream God I do I remember your children were not afraid of your anger because it was not directed towards us but to the earth and mankind for their unrepentant sin and blasphemy against you and your son you God are the righteous judge and only you have the right to judge the earth and the inhabitants left in unrighteousness I see that very clearly in your word Jesus calls us to love all and pray for our enemies but many believe that they have the right to judge and by saying adverse things about people on the other side of Jesus it will change their hearts but your word says that only you can soften and change hearts only the Holy Spirit can draw people to Jesus I know and have seen your perfect timing and I know that you are calling all of your created into a relationship with you through Jesus some have also stepped away and you are calling them to repentance and to return to you and I see all this unfolding before me I know a day is coming when you in your holiness say enough but until then I know you have called us to share your truth in the gospel of Jesus with others I will not argue with my brothers and sisters but will share scripture instead for them to read help me find the right ones about you being the judge and praying for our enemies God God please forgive me for not meeting with you yesterday I believe that you were showing me truth through your messengers thank you for meeting with me today I love you with my whole heart soul mind and strength give my mama and daddy a hug God I love you too my child now go be obedient to me so many have been led astray and need to return through Jesus so continue to be obedient um, argue with my word which is the last word child the reunion is soon but until then there is much to be done to get the harvest in the reunion will be so beautiful many are joining us every day through death soon all will be together in an instant and I said Maranatha God All right, so one of my grand cats joined Jesus today. And my daughter is really upset because our furry animals, they are our children. I know I lost a cat three or four years ago and it just killed me. I had had him for 13 and a half years. It was like, I felt like I was burying my child. And I felt like he was my child. I had him since he was two days old and um, fed him with a bottle and everything so I know she's sad and uh, I was sad too I was sad too I held him until he took his last breath and I don't know whether that was advisable or not 
but he, uh, my cat named Kitty, I know that's original, um, he left here knowing that I love, I love him, and I still do love him, and I know where he is, and someday I'll see him again. So, don't ever think that if you tell me that you lost an animal or your animal's sick, that I'm going to go, oh, it's just an animal, because they are part of our family, and we do take care of them every day like children. And it is hard. It's a hard thing to go through. So, uh, pray for my daughter and her family. So, um, I do have a replacement cat, though. Well, not a replacement cat. I have another cat. God brought me another cat named Gracie. And uh, she is a mess. I think she has a split personality. She is just the opposite of my other cat. When people would come to my door, my other cat was a protector. He was an attack cat. Well, she is just the opposite. If people come to our door, she runs for the hills. She is so scared. She's so scared. But our animals are important, and I think that God gives us our animals to take care of. And I think He gives us our animals, too, for... Um, to use as counselors, <laughs> to use as counselors that you know, <laughs> you know you're not going to see your problems on Facebook later. You know that um, your problems are going to stay with your animal. They don't. They don't go and talk. And one one lesson in life to learn is that you've got to figure out who you trust the most with what you know. And sometimes it's not everyone. But anyway, enough of that. Let's see if somebody wants to get saved. We'll see how we can do it. Let's see. Let's do a ticket to heaven. So this is a ticket to heaven. Only one per person. I'm having to move to the side because this other camera is... I don't know. I can't get them lined up. Anyway. This is a ticket to heaven. And you notice it says admit one because it's only good for one person. So every decision for salvation is only good for one person. And we're never going to be good enough to get to heaven just by being good, just by doing good things. We just never will measure up. Um, and we can't get in because our family member is saved. You know, well, they've been a Christian all their life. Well, this is a decision that everyone has to make on their own. So this says your ticket to heaven. May I offer you a ticket to heaven? You don't have to pay for it, and that's a good thing. Because you could never afford to buy it. It's free. But only because someone has already paid the ultimate price for it. And it says God loves you. And not only wants you to have a fulfilling life on earth. He also wants you to live with him in heaven forever. He's the one who offers you a paid in full ticket. No one wants to go to hell. Where there will be no joy. And no pleasures whatsoever. And God doesn't want anyone to go there either. And the Bible says that God is not wishing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3, 9 But there is a problem with getting that free ticket. We all have done wrong. We, all, we have all sinned, haven't we? God's word says, if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. 1 John 1, 8 Sin pollutes and it makes us unclean unfit for God's presence in that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Well, I look forward to that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Sin penalizes. It separates us from a sinless God. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 In short, our sinfulness blocks the delivery of the ticket that we need to get to heaven. And so the next part says, who paid for it? 
there is good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to be born and to live his life without sin. He suffered once for our sins, the righteous one for the unrighteous, all of us, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 When God laid on him the iniquity sins of us all. Isaiah 53.6 Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15, 34 The answer is simple and profound. Jesus was separated from God because he took your place and mine on the cross. And by dying, he paid in full the wages our sins had earned. Then he rose from the dead and was seen by hundreds of people and is alive today. So you can know him and receive the gift of eternal life, your ticket to heaven. That's right. The Bible says to all who did receive him, Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. You can become a new person, born of God, to start a brand new life that pleases God. And of course, all God's children have a ticket to heaven. So the next part says, do you want it? It is no accident you were given this offer of a ticket to heaven. God has made sure you can receive it. The whole issue is, did Jesus pay for all of your sins or didn't he? God said he did. Trust God that it is so. Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life. John 3:36. Just as a man says, yes, I will take this woman to be my wife, God wants you to tell him, yes, I will take Jesus to be my Savior. I believe that he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says, whoever has the Son, Jesus, has life. 1 John 5:12. If you believe that God's way to heaven is the only way, you can claim your ticket by telling God in words like these. So this is a prayer. So this is a salvation prayer. And it's not the prayer that... Um, saves you. It's the belief in Jesus, who he is, and who God says he is. So this is the prayer, and I will leave a space so you can repeat after me. Dear God, I have sinned. I know I have offended you in many ways. I am so sorry. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sins, paid my debt in full, and rose again. Jesus, I believe in you and thank you for what you've done for me. Please save me from the penalty of my sins and give me a new birth and the power to live for you. Thank you for this offer to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. So if you said that prayer, remember what John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Do you now believe in Jesus as your Savior, your only ticket to heaven? Do you have everlasting life like God said? I believe if you said that and you believe who Jesus is, and that he came and he died for all. I believe you have a ticket to heaven. And the, the people that made this is uh, Crossway Good News Tracks. Goodnewstracks.org. So this isn't anything I made up myself. This is somebody else's. But it's a good way to share the gospel. And so if you did say that prayer. 
Then the angels in heaven are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his Son. And um, if you would like a closer relationship with Jesus, then I suggest you read his word. Read God's word every day and pray and find some praise music and praise and worship. I am listening to right now The Father's House by Corey Asbury uh, in Bethel Music. Bethel Music is one of my favorites. They have so many great praise and worship songs. And uh, there's so many good new songs out. Um, I do music for our youth and it's really hard. I just want to throw a bunch of new songs at them because they're such good songs. They have such good lyrics. They're so powerful. But I can't do it. Alright. Well, I am going to do the blessing on uh, God's blessing. Numbers 24, 26. We're going to pray out of here. And um, I'm going to go rest a little bit before bedtime. Okay, so Numbers 6, 24 through 26 says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Oh, peace is not underrated. We need lots of peace. That's why I don't argue with people. Because I, I seek peace. I, I feel like everybody has their own opinion. I'm not going to argue with somebody. I'm just not. Especially if my, they're my brother or sister. I'm just not. Now I might put some scripture in there so they can go and read it. But I'm not going to argue with people. It's just not worth the time. Okay. And, you know, we need a lot less drama in life. Okay. So, uh, it's time to pray. And um, I prayed a while ago, but I'm going to pray again. God, we just come to you and uh, we just lift up so many people to you, God. All the people that Josie knows that are sick, God, we just pray that you would heal their bodies and just help them to be strong. We pray for Melissa and her baby, God, that they would just get stronger and stronger every day. And we just pray, God, for um, Mr. Mike and his family, God. We just thank you for Mr. Mike and his willingness to take in um, boys and pour the love of Jesus into them, God, by inviting them into his home. We just thank you for that. And we just pray for Josie. That you would continue to heal her body and make her, help her to feel better, God. And we pray for Austin, that you would protect him. I don't know whether they started school back or not this week, God, but we do pray for school. We do pray for the schools to continue. The Especially the older children need the socialization so much, God. We just pray for protection. Protection from this disease, God. We just pray that um, give us strong immunity systems, God, to be able to battle battle this disease, God. We know that another disease that is rampant in our country and all over the world, God, is sin. And we know that Jesus is the only cure for that sin. We just pray, God, that you would open the eyes and the ears of the lost, God, and that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus. So that they can be saved. We just pray, God, that you would help us to spend more time in your presence. That you would help us to testify of all the good things that you've done in our lives. And all the things that you've done. All through your word, God. And um, all the power that um, is in your word, God. And all the power today, too, God. We're just so thankful. We also pray that you would help us to encourage others. God, we just pray 
We just praise you and thank you, God, that you do love us, that you call us as your children, that you um, you want what is best for us, God. Even when we're praying sometimes and we just don't know why you're not answering, we know, God, that you are working all things out for our good and for your glory. So, God, just help us to be able to wait on you. And as we wait on Jesus to come and get us, God, help us to be busy. Help us to be busy boldly going forth and sharing your truth and the gospel of Jesus wherever we go. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, are they sick? Lewis and and Jesse? Do they have is it allergies or do they have something else? Alright, we'll pray for them. God, we just pray for Lewis and, and Jason Austin. God, we just lift them up to you. We just pray that you would heal their bodies. God, you know all the details and we don't. And so we're just trusting you to give them strength and help their immunity systems to battle whatever is wrong with them, God. And uh, we just pray, God, that uh, no one else would get sick either. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright. Hopefully it's allergies. I know I didn't feel too good this morning. And, uh, I feel like I have a sinus infection. But, I feel better than I did when I got up this morning. So, I'm just going to push through. I'm just going to push through. My hip does feel better today, so that's a good thing. Alright, my friend, can you think of anything else? I'm going to get off of here. I gotta upload this other video which takes a while. Okay, well, um, God bless you all and um, have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow. And good night.